the next principle is navigation. Navigating from point A to B through your level should be easy to understand. If a player is confused about where to move and where he is allowed to move, this often ends up with the player getting frustrated as his attention is pulled away from actually playing with others, instead the battle the level itself. To ease navigation, you should have a core design of clear paths that suggest movement and well-lit rooms. This is Ravine from Team Fortress 2. On the right and uh, a little bit on the left side, you can see a, a suggested path with the dirt and the railroads, like this. The next principle is what we call flow. One of the most challenging characteristics about level design is flow. Flow means that your level should be enjoyable to move through, inside or outside of combat. It's important to let players exercise control of their environment to create flow. For example, jumping on platforms and leaping for cover should make the player feel like Neo in the Matrix. Now that's how you change cover. A level should have an overall circular flow, not necessarily resembling a circle, but a flow where the player doesn't have to turn around and instead can run around the level in loops. For this reason, you should be very careful with placing dead ends, as they abrupt flow and slow down gameplay. You can, if you must, use it as a tool to house an especially strong item, so the player has to weigh the risk of being trapped versus the reward, but I'll come back to that later. As you can see, there's a reason why it's called a dead end. Your level should also feature good connectivity, which also enhances flow. Good connectivity uh, means that players are allowed to flow throughout the map from one section to another. The more openings and paths, the more connected it will be. High connectivity will also result in more options for the player which results in increased variety and strategy possibilities. Beware of making too many openings and paths, as your level could turn out to be hollowed out and lose the effectiveness of connectivity. Instead, aim to make rooms flow into each other with more than one possible route. To accomplish a good flow in your level, it's paramount that you play test. This should begin at an early stage to determine what's good and bad about your design so that you can reiterate on it and make your level better. The process should happen continuously throughout the design process. You should prototype your level design concept early by whiteboxing. Whiteboxing is a technique where you flesh out your level with as few assets as possible. The focus is on the functionality, not the aesthetics. Have a group of people play your white box level and see how they move and play around the map. There is a lot of useful information that can be pulled from playtesting right away. How are they moving? Do they get lost? Where do they fight? Does it take a lot of time to find another player? Do they turn around a lot? Because if they do, it's a good uh, indication that your flow is not that good. It's important to leave time to iterate on the feedback and on your own observations and don't be afraid to throw away ideas that just doesn't work. Another thing that is important to think about is pickups. This is where you start to consider good spots for weapon placements or other pickups. Are there any specific areas where you want to draw players? Will this help uh, your flow? When selecting locations for weapons or power-ups, it's important to not choose a location that is ideal for its use, but instead let players earn it. Another interesting way of designing pickups is thinking about risk versus reward. Consider a dead end earlier, or running through an open room with lots of windows and doors to get a weapon in the middle. Maybe it's a risk worth taking for its reward. This is the level carbon fire from Unreal Tournament 3 presenting risk and reward. If you jump down, the only way to get up in again is with the slow moving platform, making you an easy target. This takes us to another important part of multiplayer level design, choices and decisions. It's important to remember that choices are not decisions. Decisions are based solely on reason. 
with a clear correct answer, meaning their calculations, not choice. A choice is about overcoming internal conflict. Without conflict, there is no choice, only decisions. And this is what makes choice engaging. To set up conflict, you need to set the short-term and long-term goal of the player in opposition. In your usual FPS, the short-term goal is to stay alive and the long-term goal is to win. Using risk and reward to set these in opposition is a good technique. To add decision-making in your level, have more than one path from A to B with different environments while still staying true to the principle of navigation. This allows the player to decide when to use one path over another, allowing player strategies. Maybe one path is higher elevated, but far away from anything else, so short-range weapons don't work that well. Or maybe it's an underground tunnel that works well with short-range weapons. Remember to have both perks and trade-offs. If a path is clearly the best in any given situation, no other paths will be considered. The next principle is variety. As I touched on earlier, unique assets help with variety and orientation, but there is another element that adds variety as well, what we call verticality. Since we're dealing in 3D space, we should take full advantage of it by creating multiple tiers to increase the strategy involved in the level. Set the different tiers so that players can have contact with other players on other tiers than their own, instead of tiers right on top of each other. With good verticality, the gameplay will be interesting and have variation. Done right, this will allow player strategies and multiple ways to approach a given situation. Here we see the map called Lockout from Halo, uh, utilizing verticality. Last but not least is balance. If you have seen the movie A Beautiful Mind, you have probably heard of John Nash. If not, he is a mathematician well known for his works in the field of game theory. He defined what we call the Nash Equilibrium, which is as follows. If each player has chosen a strategy, and no player can benefit by changing his or her strategy while the other players keep theirs unchanged, then the current set of strategy choices constitute Nash equilibrium. In such a scenario, no player has anything to gain by changing strategy as a reaction to another player's strategy. You want to prevent this scenario at all costs, as it is ultimately boring to play and, and doesn't encourage player strategies. The ideal balance is when there is enough unbalance to make it interesting, but not uncontrollably so, as having a too unbalanced level will ultimately be boring as well. Symmetry is a common trap for balancing. Having a completely symmetric level only makes it half a level. There is only 50% of the level that is unique to what could have been 100% unique, effectively halving the gameplay and the quality of your level. Thank you very much for listening. My name is Gerstein. Uh, I hope you learned a lot and uh, I'll see you later.